Hi, this is Farhan, VU2 ESE, and this is my new Spectrum Analyzer based on the Terry White and Wes Hayward's design. And uh, this is very preliminary right now. Probably some things will still change, but nevertheless, um, I thought a video would help everyone, you know, figure out what I've done right and what I've done wrong. So, as you can see here, it looks actually like a receiver, which it is, of course. And I can actually tune around here. You can see that this uh, is showing 14.3095. And actually, I have a two-tone generator here. So you can see, actually, you know, the two uh, oscillators here. This is one, and this is the other oscillator. And you'll see that there's a, there's a coil here which pulls the frequency down and there is a capacitor across, you know, in series with it, which pulls the frequency up. So both of them are actually 14.318 megahertz crystals, uh, crystal oscillators, and we take the low distortion output from the base and we feed it to two, uh, um, two, you know, more or less their buff amplifiers with very strong attenuators in the output. And that's combined here in the combiner and you get the output here. So this output is being fed to the spectrum analyzer now. And as you can see that it's actually showing point a minus 8.6 because there are two minus 10 dB signals which are being mixed in here. And as I tune away, this is on the wide band. So actually as you tune away, you'll see that, you know, they're falling down. And once you're completely away, they will really, you know, go down to minus 75. DBM or 76 dBm actually it goes down to minus 80 dBm. The tuning knob here is actually just a potentiometer which is being read by the Arduino. So as you twist it around here, right now it's set to 500 kilohertz per step. And there are a thousand steps possible on the tuning port. Uh, you know, I just saved on the rotary encoder with this. But when you come to the very edge, it actually starts stepping down. You see now I'm not holding onto the knob at all and it's sort of scanning. So I can sit back now and we'll see that in a while when it hits 28 megahertz, we will be able to see the second harmonic of the signal sources. So there it's at about 26. It's, it, it shifts in about 500 kilohertz steps right now. But I'd like to actually put this in two modes. Well, there, there, there it is, there it is, there it is. So let me just go back here onto the other side. And here, here we would see actually the Things that the, the signal is rapidly climbing up now. And let me just see if. Oops, sorry. There's a problem with this tuning knob. You have to basically you know, keep playing around until you get the correct span here. Okay. And I'm doing something wrong. Okay. So there. This keeps going up. It'll be around 600 kilohertz or so that will start really picking up. Yeah, see there, some of the, it's about minus 52 dB. It's about 40 dB down from the 10, uh, minus 10 dBm signal. And here, I can show you how it is done. So this is an Arduino here. This is an Arduino board here. And uh, on top of Arduino board, I've just stuck a general purpose PCB through which I'm taking some outputs. And this is actually shielded with a th very thin copper sheeting. I don't know what it's used for. I guess it's used in the transformers. And this is the low pass filter here that you can see. Let me just switch the other source off. And it's going to the rest of the circuitry. Anyhow, but now I'll actually show you how this works. This is uh, the setup right now and I have this coming down to my laptop here. And I just spent a couple of minutes showing you the Arduino code. So, um, scroll up here and yeah, here you can see that there are just two places in which you can, you know, calibrate the narrow band and the wide band uh, calibration of uh, AD8307 because the path gains are different with both the filters. And then there is also something to, those are the two frequencies uh, that we need to, again, you know, set for this to work properly. And finally, I'd show you the small code, which 
does most of the magic. It's a do sweep. So I don't know if you can read this, but what happens here is that depending on the step size that you've chosen, you either go to narrow band or wide band and then through a loop from two frequencies and the step size, you keep setting the DCO, delay for 10 milliseconds and then read the analog input and adjust it for the power calibration. And you output this to the serial port here. We have a very simple command set which the Arduino gets from the PC. So that's here. So you can actually see from to uh, read number, etc. You also do a status and then when you say G, it goes to the sweep. So I'll actually now show you this working from the command line. So this is a simple serial monitor. I'll actually restart this. So I've taken this out. So now as you can see that this is a serial monitor. Uh, I've just connected to the serial port uh, and to the Arduino through the serial port here. And now I'll give a form frequency which is 14300 kilohertz there and a two frequency which is 14330000 kilohertz. Let's say I need this in the steps of 500 and I say go and it'll actually give me a whole bunch of readings. Let me just call back to these readings and I'll show you how this is working. So now this is in one tenth of a dBm. So this is a reading at 14.300 kilohertz and it's minus 87.8. And you'll see that it slowly sort of climbs up here to minus 10 dB, minus 10.4 dB. And then it dips down again. And then we have the other one, which is which will be around somewhere here. There, you can see a 12 point. 2 dB for the second tone. Uh, and we also have, then I've written a simple circuit which, uh, sorry, a simple software. And here, let me do the sweep. So now, as you can see, I can select, uh, center it at some frequency, then select the sweep uh, range and about 300 steps. And so let's see now what happens. Let me just get back to that. There was a problem in my code. I was just changing something. So anyhow, I'll show you the GUI now. It's very simple right now. So um, I essentially take the sweep and I've set this to 30 megahertz. I can set the center frequency and I can choose a sweep range and the number of steps. Uh, 300 is actually all about optimal. There's a problem with this software right now that it's a little, it's quite slow. I don't know why, because the, the sweep ends pretty fast, but you know, I'll come to optimizing the speed later. The plotting, the, 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 the plot is very slow. Um, there's some problem with my software and I'll fix it later, but nevertheless. So let's do a full scan. This will be about 60 megahertz because it's plus minus 30 megahertz starting from uh, 30,000 kilohertz. So there we go. There's some this is actually an artifact being generated by the by my software, but you would have actually seen a, the zero spur there. Uh, that's here the, the fundamental, which is about a little over 10 dB, both of them put together. That's the second harmonic that you can see here. That's the second harmonic coming up, as you can see here. I'm a little intrigued by this. There's a 25.3 megahertz spur that it's reporting. And I can actually save this if I need to, whenever I need to save this here uh, as a screenshot. But now I'll actually expand on this and I'll sweep this down to 14315. Uh, That's where I'll center this and I'll choose this range. I'll open it up a slightly widely wide 200 kilohertz and do a sweep now. So now, as you can see that those are the two uh, tones and this is the IP3 uh, distortion and probably this is the 
I, IP2, I'm not too sure. So that's there. So now let's just focus on this so that we can see what the bandwidth is like of the crystal filter. So I'll actually come down to 300 kilohertz and I'll choose this to be a 10 kilohertz bandwidth. There you go. So now this each uh, each horizontal division is about one kilohertz. Uh, so, sorry, that's about two kilohertz because it's plus minus ten. And as you can see, that there's a bit of a ripple here, a double hump actually. But this is about a kilohertz at minus ten dB down, and around here it's about five hundred hertz. So, and if you can see the skirt, which is down here, minus 80 dB, it's about two and a half kilohertz. So probably uh, one could analyze um, SSB transmitters. If I was a little careful with measuring the stuff. Now I'll actually do the same thing with my uh, 300 kilohertz filter, which is a broadband filter. So I'll just open this up to about 10 megahertz. And then let's see. See, that's the filter. There's a bit of uh, there's a bit of a triple hump there. If I open this up a little more, probably we can view that as well. There. So it's not clean. Probably I have not lined the filter properly, but that's there to it. And you'll see that the base line noise has now increased here. And if I actually close this down to back to a narrower bandwidth and it automatically chooses a narrow band filter, at that point you'll see that this is now dropped down. You see this is dropped down now by almost 10 dB, but I think that's expected. So that's the software and that's uh, how it's working now. I'm a little bothered that the IP3 is still not good enough and that's something that I'll have to work on. Thank you.